perte d'alimentation externe. Rouler 450 mètres. What we have here is the 2011 Can Am Spider RT Limited. This is new for 2011. It's basically a nicer version of your standard RT model. It comes with a Garmin GPS integrated system that sits up here between the handlebars. It is a left-hand control mechanism up here. Everything reads out on the computer S dashboard up front and it does have controls for the passenger in the back. The passenger can control the volume and can also adjust the radio station. This is integrated with an iPod, so if you have an iPod you want to plug into it, listen to your own music, of course it'll do that. It does have a luggage package that comes with it. There are bags for the saddlebags in the trunk and the rear, and the front storage compartment actually has a pull-out bag that has like little roller wheels that you would take to the airport. It does have an adjustable electronic windshield. You can do that on the fly. What I noticed about this, was I thought was fantastic in its low setting, which it is right now, it is below my line of sight. So I could look right over the top of the shield. You got a, you know, you've got some wind coming over, which keeps you cooler if it's a little hot out. If it's colder or you just want to keep the wind blast off you, you move it up to the top level. And what this did was put the top of the screen right above my line of sight. So no matter at the very lowest or the very highest, I was looking through the screen, not right across the top of it, which I thought was really nice. This bike is powered by the 998cc Rotax V-twin engine. Very peppy motor, lots of grunt. It's a little slow like right off the start and largely that's because of the traction control and the semi-automatic transmission that this has. There's no clutching, no nothing, just like a paddle shifter, bang, go second, go third, go fourth, fantastic. If you want to go down, you just hit it with your index finger and it'll back down the gears. Uh, the nice thing, what it means by semi-automatic is that you don't actually have to downshift. Everything else pretty much is, for the most part, the same thing as your other RT model. That is your Roadster Touring model. Obviously, this is set up for longer distance comfort for the rider and the passenger. It's fun. You, you can get in there and, you know, kind of lean into it and, you know, work this thing through the corner. Uh, one thing I can say about the steering, you know, it's not necessarily touchy, but yeah, I mean, you can't put too much overexertion into it or it will change its line fairly abruptly. So it does make it for, you know, an interesting ride coming from, again, a two-wheeler standpoint. With the traction control that it has on it, the anti-lock brakes that it has on it, and it has a stability control, electronic stability control, you know, all of these are safety mechanisms that on one hand might say limit the fun factor, of this bike, uh, but on the other hand, you know, I think they're necessary because if they didn't limit the fun, you would be having fun up until the point where you got into trouble, which could happen. You know, you're kind of cranking the throttle and you just, it won't hit until the bike gets out of the corner and straightened up and the rear wheel is not going to be spinning and, you know, breaking you out this way. You know, these are for maybe, say, some motorcyclists who maybe are returning to biking or for a person who wanted to get into motorcycling but was always a little reticent because of maybe the danger involved or you can't be seen very well. Obviously you're going to be seen with this thing, guarantee you're going to be seen with this thing. <laughs> Whether stopped or going down the freeway, uh, this is an attention getter. So you're getting into the you know Goldwing and BMW K1600 GT price range uh, almost with something like this. What's nice is it has the same type storage capacity you know that those motorcycles do. But for a touring type motorcycle, if you want to go out and you're putting a lot of miles on there and you're going to go and do some different motorcycle rallies or, you know, you know, tour the country, go up to Alaska, I mean, it's something you could do uh, in comfort by yourself or with a passenger. You know, does it beat out a four wheeler? Does it beat out a car? You know, for sure. You know, I would, if I given the choice, sure. If I was going cross country and I had a month to do it and I could go, you know, go to the Grand Canyon and do the scenic route, would I want to do it on something like this? Yes, it would be fun and I would enjoy it. And it'd be even greater if I had uh, my wife or girlfriend to go along with me. If it's something that's in your price range and you're considering, you know, that type of transportation, whether it be a Goldwing or a BMW, you might want to look into something like this, you know, at least maybe go out and give it a test ride and see if uh, it is something that you also find enjoyable because, uh, you know, it's not for everyone, but it definitely is for some people.